Hi, I'm Demi Mazar, and I'm really excited for you to see me have a conversation with Kara on Really Famous, talking all things uh, Tuscan, COVID, abroad, food, love, uh, film, and younger TV. Hi, I'm Kara. You're watching Really Famous, where you really get to know your favorite celebrities. Right now, you're going to get to know Debbie Mazar on a totally different level, I think. Very personal. Let's do it. I just came back from New York where I spent five months filming during COVID, a non-COVID show. So like we yeah. don't, we don't use masks in the show. So like we had, uh, I was tested 69 times PCR up the nose, um, plus multiple rapids. I had, uh, I was contact traced once I had a quarantine. I've done six quarantines already since last March of 2020 six so that's uh, like and, actually 12 weeks that's like three months that is three months yeah i mean insane because like you know now your quarantines are less because they've figured some stuff out but i have to say i don't mind quarantine because I, I like i take the time to read to watch stuff and this particular quarantine time well right now italy's in a lockdown but i'm using it to unpack my house so what happened was um, since we last talked, I got COVID in March of 2020. That was hideous. And then, and no one knew anything about it. They didn't know about losing taste or smell. Like it was really like early on. I'm glad I got it on and over with. Um, I survived it, even though I had it pretty bad. And, um, I, during that period, you know, we were like everybody else spending a lot of time at home. Uh, I mean, only time at home and just kind of like things started shifting in terms of like what do you want out of life what are we doing uh spending a lot of time with the family and we had always said uh one day we will move to italy because why not right i mean my husband moved from italy to los angeles we had two children then we moved to new york and raised the kids in new york and then after a decade, one kid went off to college. Well, she really didn't. She went to, she went to college, but it was virtual. But she went off to the dorm in Buffalo. So she started and, this year, 2020? Yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, well, 2021. So she's yeah. class of 2020. No graduation, no prom, no sex. I mean, like, you know, for kids at that age, it's intense. It's, she graduated from Murrow. So I was able to get Darren Aronofsky, Marissa Tomei, Rosie Perez, like some of them are um, alumni uh, to do a, a messaging to the kids. So like, you know, cause everybody tried to make this like, you know, virtual ceremony, like something so the kids would like feel like they had something. Yeah. But you know, there's nothing like a prom or, you know, go going to get drunk or whatever, you know, it, it, whatever those kids do, you know, like, they just couldn't replace that. And my daughter had to quit her job once I got COVID. She was working at the grocery store as a checkout girl. She was really proud to be helping during the um, pandemic in terms of like being of, of service to people. I'm like, look, I'm sorry, but like you've been exposed to COVID and you can't go to work anymore. Yeah. Um, at least not now. And then she never went back. But um, in any case, so yeah, we just decided to move during the pandemic, not because of the pandemic. It was just like, all right, like she's going to college in September. I'm going back to work. God knows when they pick the show back up. And the other one's going into a new school regardless. She's going into high school. So um, this this seems to be like the perfect time. Plus I'm in my 50s and I just felt like in life, um, I, I just wanted a new journey, something that felt fresh, something that made me uh, not be lazy. Like here, um, I'm getting a little two-door Cinquecento. I'm going to be zipping into Florence on my own, discovering ancient stuff along the way and seeing beautiful things, making new friends, uh, looking at history, looking up all the time and seeing, you know, cool stuff and questioning stuff. Maybe I, I'll start getting into fabric or or textile design or or clothes or something. I don't know. I'm maybe I'll be a florist. I have no idea. I, there's so many things going on here that make me really excited, and um and I feel kind of lonely because I, I don't hear like the train rumbling underneath the house. I don't I don't see my New York friends. I don't hear sirens. Um, it's just so different uh, than New York, but New York's not going anywhere. Yeah, I've always left and I always go back.
So I just feel like why not like have some fun. So we've always had a home here, but it was like the little crappy house that the family gave us like in the field that was like needed like all this renovations and it was completely like, you know, uh, super old, but super broken down. And I was kind of like never wanting to live in that house. He was like, oh, we'll go back to the red, the pink Casa Rosa. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> And then his father passed away a couple of years ago in an autom automobile, um, I mean, a, a motorcycle accident. And um, the mother after a few years was like, you know what guys, this house is too big for me. Why don't I take the apartment that's connected to the end of the house? You know, it's completely cut off. So it's not like she's like passing through. And you guys take the big house. Um, and her house is like really cool. It's super rustic. It's not fancy. It's like, you know, like wood beams and terracotta, nothing. It's like a farmhouse. And I was like, you know what? I think I can do it. I think I can, I, I can do it because when you're in Florence, you're only, uh, it's like about 15 minutes to drive into the center. In the center, you're right at the train station and it takes an hour to get to Rome, uh, you know, two hours to go here, two hours to go there. Sicily's not, you know, it's like you could be anywhere so fast. The airport, you could be in Paris in an hour, London, Spain, Portugal. And I'm like, and I've been working over here in Europe. And I really, when I did Arde Madrid, the Spanish series, which is on MHZ Choice, which I had never heard of, but MHZ Choice picked it up. And um, I think that's available through Netflix, not Netflix. Um, what's the other one? Amazon Prime, just so people could find it. Okay. One of my greatest experiences shooting in Spain, playing Ava Gardner, 1950s. I think I sent it to you, didn't I? Sent me what? The series? No. It's a mini series. It's eight episodes. It, it, okay. In fact, we won every award in Spain, um, in London. And we got picked up for a second season. And then the couple that wrote and directed it broke up. And they're like, you know, we can't work together. This is like destroying our relationship. So it ended perfectly. And I want you to see it. And I want anybody who's listening to this. Send it's it called to me. Arde Madrid, which means Madrid is burning. And um, it's shot in black and white, 1961. It follows uh, Ava Gardner living in Madrid, which she really did. But it's about the people that work for her and live in her house. It's hysterical. It's sexy. And I'm really proud of my work because I had to learn Castilian Spanish. Habitación. A lot of the th -th -th. It totally screwed up my Italian because now I mix Spanish and Italian. Yeah. And I, now I'm back in school for Italian only because uh, obviously I need to like learn it fluently i've always kind of like you know kind of threw in a few words here and there i've managed to buy and now everyone's like no 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 and i have to take the driving test uh the driving test is only available in italian and it's very hard they say even italians say it's hard so i've got you know two years to work that out I would, but, hold on back up there are so many things i need to ask you about you went from one topic to there's so I many know, interesting I things I jump. yeah you got you got to but I have to stop you for a bunch of them because I'm interested in a lot of them. So number one, all right, so many. So I hear what you're saying with the Spanish, mixing in with the Italian, because I watch a lot of Italian TV. We talked about it recently, yeah. Gamora, but we can talk about that later because I'm obsessed and everybody who watches the show knows or listens to the show knows. I talk about it all the time. Um, we'll talk about it, but I've been practicing Italian with my little app, my Rosetta Stone app. And oh. I know that sometimes when I am watching a lot of Spanish shows, mm -hmm. then it's like it all gets mixed in together. Yeah. So I, yeah. I feel you. So what are you doing? You said you're studying. I, um, I have a teacher. I have a teacher. I mean, I used to go to school. Um, I went to a language school, ABC Languages. Uh, the school closed during COVID. So I, we just do it online. So I study three times a week online and then, and I have about 20 more sessions left. I also use an app called Duolingo on my phone, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of good just to kind of keep yourself practiced and, and just like, you know, to just keep your brain elastic and also like you're reading and writing it. Yeah. Aside from like, you know, um, I mean, it's kind of easy Duolingo, but uh, cause I, have, I have a huge vocabulary but verb conjugation is my issue in past tense, future tense. Um, and, and Italian's really complicated. You know, I watched also a lot of Spanish shows uh, prior to filming. 
mm -hmm. uh, just to get the accent and the rhythm. And they're so good. I mean, aside from Pedro Almodovar, who we all like, love, I discovered so many great TV shows and they're so campy and sexy and the use of color and, and the art direction is just fantastic. And then the Italians are more kind of like, um, uh, like they, they go, I mean, the, the, the beauty, the emotion, uh, but a lot of them have a little bit of that 80s feel. Like uh -huh. there's something about Italy where they're a little bit stuck in a certain place. Totally, like the clothing. Yeah, I don't exactly, but I don't mind it. I mean, I think that that show uh, actually, you know, the real the real story took place closer to the '80s and '90s, so it it does have an element of um, a little bit of a throwback because I read the book because I lived in Italy, not lived, but I was coming to Italy forever, um, and I had read the book by Robert Saviano. They sold it in an English version, and then the movie came out uh, of the book. Uh, which is different than the series. Whoa, when I saw the series, I like was addicted from the very beginning. I mean, obviously I had to wait for the uh, translation. So my husband was able to bootleg it off of, I think, I don't know where, how, but um, he bootlegged it and I, I saw it like early on. And now like I'm all caught up, I watched it again. Um, on my quarantine in New York, I had one of, one of my many quarantines. I was like, you know, let me rewatch re this series because I'm so focused, you know, in, in the Nebulatan dialect, dialect I don't understand always. So like I have to really pay attention mm -hmm. to the uh, subtitles. And sometimes when you're paying attention to the subtitles, you miss yeah. what's happening in the scene. So seeing it again was fantastic. Um, what what great actors are in it? I just you know obviously Salvatore Esposito is fantastic, but um and we actually became friends off of Instagram. I'm like oh my god you're in New York you gotta come see me. He's like oh no I'm there at different dates than you are. And then every time I'm in Naples, which is kind of often I go to Naples a lot, uh, he's never there. He's always filming something in the United States. So our paths haven't crossed yet. I'm looking forward to meeting him. But some of the actresses. He's the actresses. so great in real life. Let me just tell you, because he was on my show recently. Yeah. Loved oh. him. Yeah, one of that. Seriously, one of my favorite like people. Such a Happy great guy. So good. I was shocked when I booked the interview with him. I did not even really know if he knew much English. Like I looked at his social media a little bit and I saw there yeah. was a, there were a few English yeah. posts somewhat. And I thought, okay, maybe he knows a little bit, but I'm going to be very, you know, slow. Cause I'm a fast talker, but I'm like, I'm going to slow down my pace a little and I'll be, you know, as gentle on him as I can be. But his English was fabulous. Well, it was great. Italians say they study, they have to take it in school, but I was, yeah. uh, and he also did uh, a series in Chicago for a while. Fargo. 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 I was waiting to see. I don't think it's come out yet, has it? It did. Yeah, it was out. I think it came out. It came out during the quarantine, during COVID. Um, it, I think it's season four. Chris okay. Rock is in it. Uh, Jason Schwartzman. It, yeah, so that's already out. You can see him. And he had a very memorable role there, too. Great. So Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I won't. Uh, I, I, I want to see it. He's so good. Um, but anyway, uh, what was your question again? <laughs> oh, no, I think I th I don't think it was a question. I was just we were talking about Gamora. And I think you were saying, right, you you oh, caught so not. much more the second time. I'm in the middle of rewatching it, too, because in the US, we don't have season four yet. So we're I'm only through the end of season three. So I'm like, while I wait, I'm just going to go back to season one because it's been wait, years. It took so long. Four down there because this the five is the final season. Yeah. And I saw season four. I was able to find it. And I think it's on um, I think it's on HBO Max or whatever it's called. It is, but it's not HBO Max hasn't released season four yet. They just released season three in January. And I keep talking to my rep there and checking in with him. My contact there, at HBO Max. I'm like, is there a date yet? And Lee Mortale is going to be on HBO Max too. What? Yeah, that I know. But guess yeah. what? I don't get it here. I'm like gagging. <laughs> I don't get HBO Max in Europe. Oh. So okay. um, I have. So where do you watch it? Sky. Well, I've always watched it in Italy. My husband is like, you know, good at bootlegging. I probably shouldn't say that, but he would bootleg and maybe that's where I saw season four. I'm not sure how I saw season maybe. four, but I saw it because now I'm waiting. For like, five. I'm waiting for five and that's the final one. And I am not going to tell you what happens in the end of Don't four. tell me. I'm, 
I would not tell you. It's mind blowing. Okay, I have to tell you that for in my my talk with Salvatore, I told him I it was ruined for me. Season three was ruined for me because oh. I went to Napoli on vacation and I'm in this store and my husband is trying on clothes in the dressing room and the woman who works there she and I just start talking and I'm like, oh, so do you watch Gamora? And of course, the first thing she said was what happened in season three. You know what I'm talking about. It was a big, big thing, right? Season three, do you remember? I don't want to put the spoiler alert here because I don't want to say it flat out. I will if I have to. You know what? I'm just going to cut this part. I'm going to just cut this out of the interview. She said, oh, yeah. Chittle's gone. And I said, oh, yeah. and I was like, what? You did not just say that. She wow. said it. And then I had only been done with season two. So I was devastated that I knew. Well, and then goes, though, is pretty intense. So for you to see the scene, uh, you know, you, you would, I would have never imagined that's how he went. Of course not. But I was so stressed out the whole season. Like every episode, I kept thinking to myself, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And I was so I was like, it was such a stressful season watching it. And then, you know, it happened. And I, I you know, was devastated. So I don't want to know anything about four. But I know that every it blows me away. Actually, like, you know what? Well, the way that I saw four is my husband got it here. Yeah, because it's on in London on Sky. So he was able to get it from English. Sky, and I watched it in like two days. Right. Like, so you got the subtitles in English. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think I might need to watch the last episode again. It was that good. That good. Yeah. Okay. I don't yeah. want to know. Don't tell me anything. I'm dying. I'm I'll get. I'm telling you anything. Okay. You moved to Italy basically, and it's Fiesole, right? Can I say that? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And it's okay for me to say it publicly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did you get vaccinated yet? Yeah, I'm vaccinated. So you're fully vaxxed. Vaccinated, fully vaxxed, Pfizer. I've got, I didn't come to, I was like, you know what? Um, I, let me get vaccinated before I go back. And I managed to get on a, a line. I waited five hours in the freezing cold. I thought I was going to lose my toes. And they were like, go home, is that enough? Go home. And I was like, uh-uh, not going home. I'm going to wait it out. And so many people couldn't like stand on the line that long because it was like truly freezing. I didn't drink any water. I didn't have coffee that morning. I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to pee. I don't know how long I'm going to be there. Yeah. Five hours, I made it. And I got the first vaccine. And then it, there was such an overwhelming response to this place because you didn't need an appointment that they shut it down after the first day. So you can only go back for a second vax because, um, you know, they realize that you have to have appointments. Right. So everyone went, the same people went back three weeks later then, I guess. Yeah. I saw a few of them that I, I noticed from the lines. When you're standing there, you're listening to people's conversations, you're checking out what they're wearing and what shoes, you know, yeah. <laughs> whatever out of boredom um and yeah no i i was i was like you know I'm, and i'm really glad i did because i got so sick uh that i was really scared to come back to italy because italy has no rollout basically it's like they're still vaccinating 60 years old to 80 year olds will be uh completed by july july, july. what Yes. And that's AstraZeneca too. And so I'm hoping that maybe Pfizer and Moderna will be also over here at some point, just because I need my husband to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. We have the variants here, obviously. I mean, they're everywhere. Um, and I don't know that I foresee things getting much better because the country here isn't getting vaccinated quick enough to have herd immunity that would solve the issue this particular year. Right. It's so bad. so do you feel yeah. like so do you feel like it's all around you? I mean, do you get that sense that a lot of people are still testing positive and passing it oh. around? Oh, yeah. But I also got that feeling in New York as well, because you have so many people who are anti-vax who just didn't get the vax yet. Yeah, that freaks me out, though, that it's still so slow in Europe, because I feel well, like it's getting looking so positive here. Finally. Well, right now. If we get, my husband gets in the car, it can only be one person to go to the grocery store or to the pharmacy. Uh, if you go into Florence, which is literally 10 minutes from me, 
you, uh, the carabinieri are stopping people and asking you, where's your papers? Where are you going? Why are you going there? Oh, well, I need to go get dog food. My, well, can you get dog food like at the local grocery store? Well, no, my dog is old and sick. Well, oh, okay, fine, go. Um, you, you know, you can go to a pharmacy in Florence with paperwork, but you have to have a paperwork. And they call the pharmacy and they do a prescription for Debbie Mazar there or whatever. Like they call where you're going. Oh, do you have an appointment with the doctor? Let me see. The, the, the who calls the carabinieri? The carabinieri calls the place that you're going to. They are no joke. And if they, if you get fined, it's a thousand dollars per person in the car, a thousand euro. Wait, there's more in part two with Debbie. We get really personal. She answers some very fun questions and goes a little deeper on some things that mean a lot to her. If you click on this link below, you can get right to part two with Debbie or just tap on this card right up here and it will bring you right to the next video. If you like this talk with Debbie, by the way, I think you will love my talks with Peter Herman, Miriam Shore, Michael Imperioli, Tim Daly, and many other of Debbie's co-stars. I have links to everything in the description below. Some great shows for you. I hope you'll stay tuned. If you like this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more real talks where you really get to know your favorite celebrities. Tap that notification bell and you'll get alerted every time I drop a new video, which is usually once or twice a week. Thanks for watching. I'm Kara and I'll see you with my next guest.